Just like children scream sleeping, we could dream this night away. Let's go dancing in the light. And now uh, we're going to do a song by a little lesser known singer songwriter. Uh, this one's an original. Cheers to you, oh Sam. You're the best. Big bang! Happy 50th birthday. We wish you all the best for a fantastic 50th year. Happy birthday. But I can't believe you're 50. That means that I must be 54. It's just disturbing. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Michael Go Hoyas. Happy oh, birthday, man, from the Hoyas. Have a great birthday. <laughs> Enjoy. Keep on playing. 
Keep on watching. All right, uh, please give a very warm Club SLS welcome for Mr. Robert Sokolow, my dad, who has a toast to give. Oh, what a remarkable guy you are, Seth. I am, I am so proud of you. And the rest of you, friends and family, you all made the effort to be here because of your affection for Seth. Uh, he was born in the wee hours of July 6, 2021. I was at Seth's mother's shoulder, <laughs> Liz's shoulder, in Yale New Haven Hospital. For a father to be allowed into the delivery room was a big deal. Our obstetrician was breaking ground. When Seth's, when Seth's brother David was born two and a half years earlier, I was also breaking ground, just sta standing in the doorway. We've come a long way. Fast forward 16 years and I'm the in the passenger seat as Seth learns to drive a car. There's a particular steep section of a street a few driveways long in Princeton where Seth practiced releasing the clutch gently enough to start on a hill over and over and over. We must have practiced that action 20 times in a row. Determination, thy name is Seth. A father in the delivery room, a car with a clutch, I'm deliberately choosing details that capture some history. Next is a movie, Kramer versus Kramer, where Dustin Hoffman becomes my mentor. It was 1979, Seth was seven, and my marriage to his and David's mother was coming apart. What sort of parenting lay ahead for me? Nearly all fathers in divorces became weekend parents in those days, but times were changing. Kramer versus Kramer spoke directly to my generation. It is about a work-focused work father who becomes a single parent of his six-year-old son. As I recall, Dustin Huffman burned the food he was cooking for his son, was inept in other ways as well, but generally loved being a dad, and his son was loving it too. The women's movement was underway, and gender assumptions were being challenged from all directions. Joint custody was a new flavor, a new possibility. For a full decade, I was a 50-50 co-parent. Seth, David, and I sometimes called ourselves the Three Musketeers. So thank you, Women's Movement. Thank you, Dustin Huffman. And thank you, Liz, for making co-parenting possible. <laughs> now let's acknowledge two rushing rivers that run through Seth's life. The first is the European language river. French, Spanish, German, and now Czech. Seth's love of languages is intimately connected with his love of communicating with people. Seth, along with several of you here tonight, spent a year in Freiburg, a city chosen by Seth because it was close enough to the French-German border for him to be able to improve his skills in two languages at once. Seth these days is learning Czech. He is confronting the reality that learning a new language is easiest for a small child and gets steadily harder with age. But Seth is calling on that same determination that got him to master the clutch. He will, he will succeed, and yet another European world will open itself to him to be shared with Helena. Seth's other river, of course, is his tennis river. to finish. <laughs> okay, of course, this is, he, has, he, has, he has derived so much pleasure from following tennis in so many directions. Here I will call out how Seth, more, than, more or less single-handedly, identified the financial resources and spearheaded the city's investment in the resurfacing of more than a dozen of its public tennis courts. A decade, decades-long labor of love. <laughs> Applause. The rivers of French and tennis periodically join and flow together for a while. Soon after zeroing in on tennis, Seth became infatuated with Yannick Noah. <laughs> At age 15, Seth got a photo of himself with Yannick, which Seth may still keep under his pillow. Helena will, will have to tell us. <laughs> Seth came very close to having dreadlocks. This is true. Who knows? He might still have had them tonight. 
So on, as Seth turns 50, four central characters share his stage. First, daughter Laurel, a miracle in Seth's life and mine. What an exciting young woman, abundantly curious about how the world works, deeply troubled by how much is wrong, puzzled by the passivity of her elders, one more yep, determined to find ways to fix the bad and enjoy the good. Laurel is flourishing right now, and it is a treat for me to be part, a small part of her world. Seth is co-parenting Laurel. He had to fight harder for the opportunity than I did. Seth had been determined as a young adult not to recap recapitulate the co-parenting family structure he had grown up with. But life throws curveballs, throws curveballs. And as the Rolling Stones song goes, you can't always get what you want. But then you, then you create your own good fortune. Like me, he thoroughly relishes every bit of his co-parenting. Second Helena, yeah, girl. a wife who gets Seth. Yeah, who loves him as he is. The roots of their remarkable compatibility, I think, are an limitless openness to adventure. Not many of us cavorted to Tahiti as soon as the COVID rules made this possible. A love of the beauty of nature, this marvelous retreat here in Murphy's, and especially a capacity for empathy, for getting into other people's shoes and understanding their needs better than they do themselves. Seth is a lucky guy. Third brother, David. I am equally proud of both of my sons. They are taking very different paths through life, but what is important to me is that each is listening to his own drummer. David and Seth will stay close, indeed probably grow closer, as they age from here. To everyone's delight, their two daughters are also very different from each other, have become incredibly close friends. And Claire is here tonight. I'm almost done. Fourth, Mother Liz. One never stops being a parent. Liz and I have provided four decades of amicable and complimentary co-parenting. This is as good a time as any to acknowledge how much Seth has benefited from Liz's insistence on kindness as the bedrock of being a worthy human being. So my wish for you, Seth, is to preserve what you have built and keep building on it. You have such treasures in Laurel and Helena. Helena. You have such a cornucopia of friendships. May they all sustain you, and may you sustain all of them throughout your second half century. Yeah. And we need Seth for this last one here. My sister got lucky, married a yuppie, took him for all he was worth. Now he's got nothing, pen in the oven, I can't decide which is worse. Not me, baby, I've got you. Best thing I ever had, all of you, best thing I ever had. In a world gone mad, you're so bad. My sister's ex-husband can't get no love in. Walks around all face and hurt. Now he's got nothing than in the oven. I can't decide which is worse. Best thing I ever had In a world gone mad You're so bad Oh, you're so bad Best thing, best thing I ever had In a world gone mad You're so bad
Everybody, that wasn't enough. You got to give it up for Mr. Kent Brown, originally from Alabama, now making his home in San Francisco. Please give it up for Kent Brown. Oh, thank you. Kindly. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks for jamming with us. <laughs>